Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Annelise and today I will be reviewing an entire new collection of fragrances that Zara just came out with. They actually released a whopping 11 new fragrances in the women's collection. But today I am talking about nine of these because those nine belong to the same collection. And then they have two other ones that do not belong to this collection. I will also be reviewing those, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video because I feel like this one is already going to be pretty long. So um, yeah, let's just get into it. If you like Zara fragrance reviews like this one, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post many Zara fragrance reviews and other fragrance reviews as well, but mainly Zara. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on this video and let's just get started. So at the time of this recording, uh, these fragrances have not yet listed on Fragrantica. So I'm basically just using the notes that Zara gave in their descriptions and obviously just my own notes, the notes that I'm picking up. Uh, so I don't have a Fragrantica to have as a reference, but um, by the time I'm editing this video, I'm kind of hoping they're up on Fragrantica so I can still put those notes up on the screen. Okay, I'm just gonna start with the first one, which is called Blanc à Porter. This is a 100 ml bottle and it retails for 23 euros roughly and roughly 30 US dollars. Zara describes this one as a layering fragrance with a delicate intensity, which is basically their way of saying that it's a very subtle scent. It has musky notes such as ambrette, bergamot and cashmere and wood and supposedly it enhances other fragrances if you layer them with this one. So the fragrance by itself smells very nice. Um, I smelt it and I immediately thought of the Molecule fragrances by ex Eccentric Molecules um, or Eccentric Molecules. Um, this one basically smells very similar to those. I haven't smelled every single molecule fragrance of that eccentric molecules line, but um, basically I've tried the molecule 01 and um, I found it pleasant. I thought it had a little bit of a pencil shaving vibe. I know I'm not the only one who smells that and uh, well, I agree. It does have that. I'm not sure. I think it's ICO Super or Ambroxan or, you know, one of those types of chemical like ingredients to enhance, you know, the scent of your own skin. This one does not speak of Ambroxan or ICO Super or one of those, you know, those um, ingredients. It just speaks of Ambrette, Bergamot and the Cashmere and Wood but it does smell very similar like those molecule perfumes. I have tried it on skin just without any other fragrance. And in my experience, it is very pleasant. You are definitely getting that your skin but better scent because it has that ambrette, which I love. I think it is a fantastic fragrance note. So the ambrette is very nice. It's, you know, it smells like a very pleasant skin. You do get a little bit of that woodiness um, and then, you know, a little bit of very subtle freshness, which is probably the bergamot. I think if there was a Molecule 01 plus bergamot, this is probably what it smelled like. I know they have plus iris and plus patchouli plus mandarin, those types of scents. And this smells like what you would imagine a Molecule 01 plus Bergamot would smell like. So it is subtle, obviously, it's a skin scent, but it is definitely there. So you're not really having this major cloud of fragrance around you. That's not what it's supposed to do. Um, it's a subtle, nice, very close to the skin scent that you have, but it is there, okay? It's not um, super, it doesn't disappear very quickly, it stays on the skin. I do like it. I think the quality is definitely there. However, it claims to enhance other fragrances. I've tried it with one other fragrance. I've used the fragrance on both my wrists and then I used this one on my left wrist and not on my right wrist. 
so I could compare to see if it really does enhance the other fragrance. And honestly, in my experience, I've just tried it the one time, but in my experience, it didn't really enhance anything. It sort of altered the scent of the fragrance because it just added a little bit of this scent, which I liked because this is a nice sort of base, let's say, or just an extra layer of that ambrette that does make other fragrances nice if you like the scent of this, obviously. But I did not really feel, unfortunately, that it enhanced anything. Um, I am going to give this a few more wears with some other fragrances. Maybe I'm mistaken. I'm kind of hoping I am. But for now, mm, it doesn't really enhance anything. But it smells nice, nevertheless. Okay, so now we can start with the actual eight fragrances of the new collection. I also included the Blanc à Porter because the bottle has the same design, so I do think it is a part of the collection. By the way, the collection is called the Minimal Collection, um, but it sort of stands on its own since it's, you know, like a layering, enhancing, skin scent type of scent. Uh, the other ones really have notes and are actual perfumes. These new fragrances come in both 100 ml bottles and 30 ml bottles. In Europe, where I live in Belgium, I paid um, 13 euros for the 30 ml and I think the 100 ml bottle is 23 euros. In the United States, you will be paying roughly 30 dollars for a 100 ml and almost 16 dollars for a 30 ml bottle. And in Canada, you will pay roughly 40 Canadian dollars for a 100 ml and 20 Canadian dollars for a 30 ml bottle. So this new minimal collection consists of four categories with two fragrances in each category. For now, I'm sort of thinking that when time goes by, they will be adding more fragrances per category, but I'm not sure. That's just something I'm thinking maybe is the new thing that Zara does with their fragrances. But for now, we have two per category, and the categories are Into the Joyful, Into the Floral, Into the Gourmand, and Into the Woods. I'm going to start with Into the Joyful, and it has two fragrances, with the first being Someday, Sometimes. This is a rose raspberry patchouli fragrance with medium intensity, and they describe it as a fresh floral that um, evokes the uh, memory of clean laundry. So I gave it a spritz, I gave it a try, and my instant reaction was, holy crap, this is really, really strong and really beautiful. You get a blast of rose patchouli, um, very strong. Luckily, I because I had to spray 11 perfumes to give them a try, I um, sprayed them one by one, out on the terrace and I'm glad I did because it's very strong. Medium intensity, I don't think so. This is very strong, this is a beast. And it's very, very nice. It smells very chic and sophisticated. It smells expensive. I don't think of the scent of clean laundry at all. I don't know why they said that in their description because that's not what my laundry smells like but it's super nice nevertheless. It is quite patchouli heavy, uh, but you're mainly getting that rose. And I was instantly like, okay, I know this fragrance, but I can't really pinpoint it right away. But then maybe like two minutes later, it hit me that this is basically this. So, this smells exactly like Fashionably London. Seriously, they smell almost identical. So I have this one. I was like, oh, you know, I love it. I think it's a great fragrance. It's kind of harsh. It's not for everybody. But um, yeah, they are extremely similar. Honestly, they're so similar to the point that you really don't need both, even though they have low price points, both of them. The only difference that maybe I'm picking up is that this one has a little bit more patchouli or has patchouli. I'm not even sure this one has it, but they are both very, very strong, 
rose um kind of harsh rose scents so definitely not a subtle scent you need to be aware that if you're wearing one of these um your presence will be known wherever you go i think it's fantastic i definitely think it's worth checking out if you do not own fashionably london but if you do it's totally unnecessary to own both but all in all a fantastic fragrance I do highly um, recommend giving it a try if you like strong rose fragrances. Then the number two of the Into the Joyful um, category is called Les Heures Passent, which means the hours are passing. And this is a ginger tonka bergamot fragrance with medium intensity. According to the Zara website, they are combining that bergamot, ginger and tonka with some amber and musk, lemon and mandarin orange. And they describe it as being um, giving the impression of being near the sea. So I gave it a sniff and... Okay, first off, it smells great. I don't know if this is a dupe for something. If it is, I don't know why, but I'm thinking Lalabo. It kind of has a Lalabo vibe and I haven't tried many of Lalabo so it might be that it's a dupe for one of those that I'm just not familiar with. But basically when I smelt it I got the impression of a big cup of like a soft black tea with a slice of ginger, a slice of orange, a slice of mandarin and a cinnamon stick in it. And it kind of reminded me of that tea or drinking that tea in a like like a beauty spa or a wellness, you know, somewhere where you're just relaxing and getting your inner peace on somewhere where they have those um, aroma diffusers with the essential oils, nothing eucalyptusy or anything, but super calming notes and I feel like I'm there maybe looking out at the sea or to the sea it's just very peaceful and quiet and cozy at the same time it doesn't speak of cinnamon but it has a cinnamony vibe could just be the ginger they're talking about but I do feel like it's more of a do you know the dried powdered ginger that you get um, you know, that's just with your herbs and spices, like it smells more of that than actual fresh spicy ginger. I think it is a fantastic fragrance. It is like nothing I own or have owned. Um, so it does smell very modern and personally, I think it smells niche. And I also think it smells rather unisex. I think a guy could totally pull this off. It doesn't smell feminine. It doesn't smell masculine. It just smells like a super nice scent. It reminds me slightly of the new um, Goldfield and Banks. I think it's called Ingenious Ginger. Gave that one a sniff. I liked it. I did think it was a little bit lemonade-y. So just a tad too sweet. I'm not saying it smells exactly like that, but it is sort of reminiscent. So that could be what they were trying to do as well. But I'm not sure about that. If you know if this is a dupe for something, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know what they are duping, if even, maybe they're not, but I'm thinking a lot of these fragrances are actually dupes, um, but I just don't know what they're duping, so please let me know. Could be something BDK, maybe. Could have that vibe, but I don't know why I'm thinking of a labo, but... My gut tells me they are duping something by Lalabo, maybe Bergamotti, I don't know the number. Let me know in the comments if you know, but that was Les Heures Pass and it is fantastic. Okay, time for category number two, which is Into the Florals. And the first one of that category is called True Amore. So True Amore is described as a rose, grapefruit and vetiver scent with medium intensity. So this one, again, is pretty rose heavy. Um, it is in the same sort of category as the first one that we discussed. That was a rose patchouli bomb. This one is more subtle. This one is definitely rose as well, but 
I feel like this is a very green rose and it actually reminded me, I'm not saying it's a one-on-one -on -one dupe, but it really reminded me of uh, Balenciaga's Flora Botanica, which is also a super green rose. It doesn't have any sweetness in it. It doesn't have any fruitiness in it. This one though has some grapefruit, which Flora Botanica does not have. Flora Botanica is known for its um, cannabis note as well and some mint. I actually recently decluttered my Flora Botanica because it was just too green for me. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't really get the love that it gets. This one is similar. Again, it's not a one-on-one -on -one dupe, but I do think it's similar. It's definitely that same category, but because this one also has some grapefruit, it's just a little bit less dry and sharp than Flora Botanica, which is making me like this one more. It's a clean, watery, uh, like rose petals, like that type. The, the stems of roses, I feel like, are also in here. So it's ultra feminine, it's ultra elegant. That's the vibe I'm getting. So basically, Flora Botanica-like, but with a little bit of grapefruit. And this is basically rose in a very pure form. I think rose can be very bold and harsh. Not necessarily in a bad way. That's not how I'm saying it, but it can be like a very heavy scent, rose-centered scent. This one is very light and watery and airy and mostly green and fresh. But yeah, that was True Amore. Next up from Into the Florals is called Spirited Romance. This is a honeysuckle, white musk, white flower bouquet with delicate intensity and added bergamot notes and powdered iris and rose. This one is actually the only one from the entire collection that I would not recommend, basically because it is extremely underwhelming. It smells like two things. The first thing that popped into my head when I smelt it was deodorant. I know I said that about another Zara fragrance in one of my earlier videos. That was Wonder Rose, Wonder Rose Sublime, I think it was called. Very basic deodorant, deodorant scent. This one is exactly the same. Um, very, very underwhelming, just boring to be honest. It's not a bad scent, but it just smells like a basic deodorant. And, you know, thinking about it a little bit more, it also reminded me of makeup wipes. You know, the wipes in the packet that you just yank out at the end of the evening because you're too lazy to actually decently wash your face and you're in your bed just thinking, okay, this is better than nothing. Those wipes smell exactly the same as this fragrance. That is why I'm just underwhelmed by it. I would not recommend it. I'm not really picking up on any notes either. It's just... Like, it just smells like skincare, which is fine if, you know, if this were the only fragrance in the world for some reason, in some weird universe, this is the only fragrance that exists, I would still wear it. So it's not a bad fragrance, but even with the low price point, I still don't think it's worth the money. It's just not impressive at all. Even if you're looking for a subtle scent, Still not impressive enough, still wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Feel free to check it out for yourself and let me know in the comments what you think of this one. But that was Spirited Romance. Okay, so now we've reached the Into the Gourmands category, which I know a lot of you are especially curious about because gourmands are very popular. And the first one is called Velvet Shadow. This has notes of marshmallow, bergamot, and jasmine, and is described as a candyish fragrance with mandarin and should be long lasting and sweet. So I took off the cap, put the atomizer to my nose, and I instantly recognized this very prominent note that I personally am not a fan of whatsoever. But I know a lot of you are, so this is very marshmallow heavy 
and it reminded me instantly of Killian's Love Don't Be Shy. So obviously, because I hate the note of marshmallow, I do not own Killian's Love Don't Be Shy. I have sniffed it several times because I was trying to understand what the hype was, but again, just not for me, but I know it has a massive fan base. Um, so, so I guess it's just me who doesn't like that type of scent, but this is very, very similar to it. I do have a sample of Oriana from Parfum de Marly, and I put the Oriana sample on my right wrist and, well, or my right hand, and this one on my left hand gave it some sniffs to compare. Now, I have to be honest, because that marshmallow note is so sickly sweet to my nose, it is kind of hard to get past that and to actually detect or, you know, really smell the other notes. The only difference between Oriana and this one was that Oriana seemed to have some orangey notes, which I did not get with this one. So I'm not sure, is it a dupe for Oriana or a dupe for Killian's Love Don't Be Shy? Or is it just a third marshmallow scent that fits into that type of category? I'm not an expert on those scents, but to my nose, it just smells like Love Don't Be Shy and Oriana combined together. So again, for me, hard pass, but I know a, I, I'm actually thinking this is going to be a bestseller of the collection just because so many people love Love Don't Be Shy and also it is wildly expensive. So I'm thinking this is going to be selling a lot, but unfortunately not for me, this one I will be returning, but that was Velvet Shadow. Second fragrance from Into the Gourmands is called Splendid Bronze. This is a jasmine, black, vanilla, and orchid flower scent, and they describe it as an aromatic floral scent with jasmine, orange blossom, heliotrope, and orchid mixed with cashmere wood and black vanilla. So I gave this a sniff and my reaction was, oh my God, I need to have this right now. This is not going anywhere. This is going right on my stand. Might just get the big bottle. And when my enthusiasm calmed down a bit, I realized, I totally know this scent. I've actually owned this scent. And it took me a few minutes and then it hit me. Oh, you know, this is clearly, clearly a dupe for Mugler's Alien. So I still have my old bottle. This is an original 15 ml bottle before reformulation by L'Oreal, before it was Mugler. And back in the day when it was just Thierry Mugler. It is empty, but I can still smell it on the atomizer. This was my signature scent. It was basically my only scent. I wore this nonstop for about a year, I'm thinking. I think it was around like 2015, 2016, something like that. So this one immediately brought me back to that time. Maybe that's why I liked it so much because I've owned it and it just, you know, gave me some memories or something, but it smells amazing. It's a little bit less sweet than the original, but mind you, again, I'm comparing to the pre-reformulation one. Um, I haven't smelled Alien since it got reformulated, so uh, maybe this one smells like the new Alien, but they're still very similar. It's absolutely a dupe. I think it is fantastic. I love it. So basically, if you don't know what Alien smells like, it is a um, sort of, it's a very aromatic, sultry, sexy, um, mysterious jasmine scent. I've always liked Alien. I've never repurchased just because I have worn it in the past and there are so many other fragrances. But now that I have this dupe, I kinda, I'm kind of happy to have it in my collection because I do feel like Alien has made a comeback now into my collection. So yeah, I'm keeping it. It smells amazing. And I'm telling you right now, this is an amazing dupe for Alien. I would recommend it. Um, and that was Splendid Bronze. We have reached our final category, which is called Into the Woods, and the first one is called Nobody Knows. The notes of this one are black currant, ebony, rose, and black pepper, and supposedly has an intense intensity. So I gave it a sniff, and again, this is a dupe. But for some reason, 
Zara decided to dupe their own original fragrance because this is an almost exact dupe of this. It's ebony wood. It smells the same. And ebony wood is not a dupe for anything. Um, I've seen some uh, TikTok and Instagrams claim that it's a dupe for... What was it? I think they were comparing it to uh, Blackberry and Bay by Jo Malone or something. Um, it's not a dupe for that. They have similar they have similar vibes, but I'm thinking Ebony Wood is not a dupe for anything. But now Zara decided to dupe their own fragrance for some reason. They call this one Nobody Knows, but yeah. I know that you're duping your own fragrance. So basically, I love Ebony Wood. It is, a, it is an amazing unisex fragrance, ideal for winter, and it has bomb longevity. So I don't really need it if you have Ebony Wood. I don't think you need this one at all. Maybe this one is slightly softer and a little bit more feminine than Ebony Wood. But honestly, there's hardly any difference. I don't think it's worth having both. So um, yeah, if you don't know what Ebony Wood smells like, it is a very wintry, um, woody, but also like a dark cherry-like uh, perfume. I've talked about this one on my channel already and I always compare it to a cherry potpourri. That's always the vibe I'm getting from Ebony Wood. And this one um, just smells the same. So that was Nobody Knows. And then we've come to the final one of this collection. So the second one of Into the Woods. And this one is called By Love. By Love has notes of sandalwood, patchouli, and rose, and it has an intense intensity. And again, this is 100% a dupe, but... Okay. I know it's a dupe. I know, I know this scent. But my brain, something is not really working the way it's supposed to work because I'm thinking it's a dupe for L'Interdi by Givenchy or one of the L'Interdis, the black one, the red one, the regular one, the new one. No, it's not for the Burning Neroli one. That one is not this one, but I do find this to be very L'Interdi reminiscent, but something tells me that I'm mistaken and that I'm totally thinking of another one, a different fragrance, but that I'm just mixing them up in my head or something. So please let me know, have you smelled this one? And am I right? Is it L'Interdi that they're duping? Or am I totally thinking of another fragrance? L'Interdi also has patchouli and sandalwood, but they have a very strong tuberose note. And this one should have a rose note. Guys, I'm not getting... I'm not getting any rose, I'm getting tuberose all the way. But basically, it's a super, super nice scent. I give this, I gave this a wear on skin and it did last me a pretty long time. By the way, all of these I've worn, I think I've worn five of them on skin and the other ones I just sprayed on blotter strips and they were all very impressive when it comes to longevity and performance. I was actually really impressed. Especially, look how cute this bottle is. The 30 ml is only 13 euros. And if you're from the States, it's only 15.90. And if you're from Canada, it's only 20 Canadian dollars. I mean, that's not a lot. So Zara, again, is impressing me with this line. I mean, yeah, most of these I really like. The velvet one was not for me, but you know, that's just personal taste. I do think it's gonna be a very popular one. So I'm super excited that Zara released this collection and I'm super happy that I got to sniff them all. And uh, I think they are fantastic. The quality is there. The scents are amazing. I'm definitely going to be keeping a lot of these fragrances that I've tried now. And I would love to hear what your thoughts on them are. So do let me know in the comments. I know I'm pushing you to leave me comments, but that's really because I feel like I want to talk about fragrances with someone else besides my husband who listens to me, but he's not like 
a fragrance junkie like I am. So I would love it if we could, you know, chat in the comment section. That was it for today. Feel free to hit that subscribe button, uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Zara fragrance reviews, I have two more videos coming up. I've also reviewed uh, some men's fragrances and then the other two florals that Zara released um, like last week. So I will be posting more Zara fragrance reviews. Every time they're gonna release a new collection, I will be there to review them. So um, hopefully I will see you for the next one. Bye.